Well, good afternoon, okay, everyone. Pastors. Before we get going, we are going to uh, commence with our invocation from Pastor George Saylor. Pastor Saylor. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to be invited to pray. I also come as a member of the Winter Shelter Network Council, and I thank you for that partnership to serve the needy in our community. I was eager to say yes to the invitation to give the invocation today, because today we stand on the edge of Lent. I know not everybody observes Lent or practices Lent, but there are some lessons in Lent for all of us, because Lent is a season of prayer and fasting, of reflection and repentance, and of giving and service. With that in mind, let us pray. God, our creator, sustainer, and redeemer, as we stand on the front of the season of Lent, whether we observe Lent or not, may we all be led into a time of prayer and giving and service. For we all need prayer. We all need to know you and be known by you, to know your will for us and for all we serve and represent. We all need to give, to give our resources, our energies, our gifts, to give so that others may be blessed. And we all need to serve. From the greatest to the least, we are all called to put the needs of others before ourselves. For when we are all seeking the blessing and welfare of others before ourselves, we in turn will be blessed and we will flourish. So now we ask your blessing on the people who have been called in this room to lead in the community in which we live and work. Help them as leaders to listen and to learn and to understand and then to respond so that their decisions may reflect your will and serve the greater good. Remind them that everyone here, everyone they represent, is a neighbor, and we are called to love our neighbors. Remind them to protect the least among us, our children, the elderly, the poor, those who are hungry, those who have no homes, those who are ill, the strangers, the immigrants in our midst, those who live on the margins, those who are alone, those who might otherwise be forgotten if not represented here today. Grant them and us the wisdom and courage to know and do what is right and good and true. May we all speak out when it is time to speak, listen when it's time to listen, and may we all be guided by your spirit and the spirit of justice and the spirit of love. We all pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Saylor, thank you so much for being here with us, and thank you for representing the Winter Shelter Network. That has been a decade-plus partnership that has done a great job of caring for those in Douglas County in crisis, so thank you. Amen. Appreciate you. And you're always welcome to stay, although we respect your busy schedule, so you do not need to stay for the entire hearing. I always like to remind our partners there, yep. So we do have some employee recognition today before we begin our regularly scheduled business meeting. Dan Roberts would like to recognize Shane Clark for his 20 years of service with the Department of Public Works. Dan? Shane couldn't make it today, so we'll uh, move that to another date. Another date. Okay, we'll give Shane our best. Uh, Morgan Moorhart would like to recognize Dave Knob for his 15 years with Parks Maintenance. Commissioner uh, Terrence Quinn, um, I'm going to go ahead and lead off for us today for Dave. Um, Dave's worked for 15 years with the county um, before uh, as an open space technician or a parks technician. Before he did that, he was uh, kind of a farmer rancher with cattle and some grain crops out in, outside Fort Morgan. Um, anyways, uh, a lot of that knowledge he's put into the parks, and if you ever go into one of Dave's parks, they are pristine. Um, it's good enough to eat off of, I like to say. But with that comes a lot of knowledge that we've gained over time from Dave. And so I'd like to share with you a few of the lessons that he's taught me over time. Um, First of all, bathrooms are the most important thing uh, in your parks because most people are going to visit them when they come to the park. So Terrence, make sure you clean them right and prep them correctly and have them properly supplied. And so I, I'm good with that. Never walk on Dave's frozen turf. The grass may be, um, have the little icicles on it, but when you walk on it, you break the grass. This is something I didn't know uh, and got in trouble for. So uh, don't do that. Um, <laughs> When you're mowing the lawn, um, which is what I call it, I think you guys um, remind me that th this is a really big lawn mower. Don't blow garbage 
out of the lawnmower. It's hard to pick up when you do that. And by the way, Terrence, if you can't mow a straight line, get the heck off the lawnmower um, and let someone else who can do it, do it. Um, and then the last thing was, um, as I was watching him, um, tending to the ornamental grasses. Never plant ornamental grasses because they use up a lot of water and they're hard to maintain. So Dave, thank you for those lessons for me. I'd like to turn it over to Steve Schultz uh, and then Morgan because they had to uh, say a few things about Dave also. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for the time. Um, Dave came to us about 15 years ago. He came not only from the uh, ranching farming background, but also uh, the town of Parker. So came in with a bunch of uh, experience. But Dave brought us a attention to detail that I, I haven't seen anywhere else since I've worked with the county or, or anywhere before. But not only are the parks really nice, but Dave likes to make sure that all the facilities, that the maintenance shops, the equipment and things are always top notch and ready to go for the next day. So. Dave brings that, um, and that's obviously apparent in the, uh, the condition of the parts we see. Now, there's another side to Dave, too, um, and that, you know, working in the, working in the parks, but he uh, also raises bucking bulls for rodeos. So another thing for Dave. Um, Dave can often be seen rubbing elbows with celebrities from all over the country, including sports celebrities uh, in his jur jur journeys around, and, um, well, well, vacation down in Turks and Caicos. That's kind of that's kind of the spot, right? So I maybe shouldn't have said that here because I guess it's a hidden gem, but it's a, a wonderful place that he likes to go. So uh, from me, and I'll turn it over to Morgan. Um, but thank you, Dave, for your 15 years. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Morgan Morehart, Parks District Supervisor. And I've had the privilege of working with Dave for the last 10 years, and I am constantly impressed with his work ethic, dedication, and pride in his work. He sets an example for our entire division on the quality we strive to attain with the maintenance of the county's properties. Dave has proven himself to be someone others can look up to and go to for advice. He started a mentor program with the Parks Department in order to provide training to other technicians. These trainings help to speed up the learning curve of lesser experienced technicians and has been a tremendous benefit to the department. Dave has also received many kudos from the citizens of Douglas County. I'd like to read you an excerpt from an email I received about Dave's efforts. My name is Rick Nelson. I live immediately north and slightly east of Bayou Gulch Regional Park. My family and I have lived here in the Timbers since 2006 and have always felt fortunate to have such great recreational amenities so close to our home. The facilities at the park are great and offer DC residents a nice variety of recreational opportunities as I'm sure thousands of other residents and visitors would agree. The park sees a lot of people and gets a lot of use, especially in the evenings and on weekends. The dog park is particularly popular. It is not uncommon to see 20 or 30 dogs or more at the dog park. It can be a zoo and yet the turf area has never been in better shape. Lush green grass for dogs to romp and play. What a pleasant luxury. In general, the entire park has usually been kept in really good shape. I usually notice when upgrades are added or significant maintenance activities are going on. These efforts don't go unnoticed or unappreciated, even if you rarely hear about it. The park has never looked so good as it has this past year, in my opinion, due in large part to the current maintenance dude, a good guy and a hard worker. I hope you continue to support him and appreciate the value he adds to the county's recreational investment. Finding a good, reliable hand like him is not easy, Trust me, I know. And that's from Rick Nelson, president of the High Prairie Farms Metro District. I'd like to personally say thank you to Dave for all your hard work and dedication. And with that, I'd like to turn it back over to the board. Thank you so much for that. So we're incredibly honored that so many from your department have come here to honor Dave. Dave, would you like to say anything? Yep. I want to thank you, the commissioners, for allowing you know me to do my job and, and take care of us in the Parks Department. And, give us the equipment that we need and and everything. I'd like to thank Terrence and Steve for have the trust in me to do my job and especially Morgan for all he does for me. He allows me to pretty much have free reign and he trusts my judgment and just wanted to thank everybody here. Well, thank you for that. Why don't you stay put and I think the Board of County Commissioners might have some comments for you. Morgan? 
So I think what we see standing before us is the secret sauce about what makes Douglas County so great and different. So the director is here, and then the director of parks, and then Morgan, who's the direct supervisor of Dave. Um, I remember when I saw Morgan in a in your truck one time in a parking lot, and I just walked up and knocked on the window, and we had a little conversation, because I want to know who you are. And what I learned from you then is what I see in front of us now. I, I see and I've heard passion, attention to detail, um, a mentor program. So you are helping others, Dave, deliver what you do the other citizens. So this is a team that respects each other and helps each other to help our citizens. So Dave, thank you for everything you have done to add to the team. Uh, they all wouldn't be here today if they didn't respect you, so thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Teal. Thank you, Chair. Well, the worst trash to roll over with a lawnmower, especially after the sprinklers run on top of the uh, the shredded up paper paper cups. See, he knows. It, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, uh, speaking from experience that granted I haven't had to call on in about, I don't know, 28 years or so, when I worked, uh, um, you know, uh, grounds maintenance uh, back at good old university in northern Colorado, it's always great to hear stories like you, Dave, of coming to the county, being here for such a long time. Uh, one of the things that I learned when I was in business is when I would have a great mentor who said, run the business, run it like it's your business. And it kind of sounds a little bit like that's a uh, leadership model that Terrence you're uh, implementing. And why, Dave, it kind of sounds like you take your own personal ownership of the parks you're assigned to. And I, I got to tell you, I think the people at Douglas County appreciate that. It, it's more than just um, the, the park that you could eat off of. It's, it's what helps make uh, the such a special place. So I'm glad that you've been here for 15 years. Um, you know, go ahead and take a couple of vacations to Turks and Caicos. I got a buddy or former business partner who swears by the place to, do you scuba dive? Uh, yes. Uh, well, there you go. That's the, uh, that's the secret right there. But um, again, hey, thanks for 15 years. Take a couple of vacations, hopefully get another 15 out of you and uh, keep it up. We're counting on you. Thank you. Well, David, maybe some, some final comments. You know, you don't get to 15 years without having a lot of respect from your colleagues, and we just heard a lot about that. But you have demonstrated uh, not only a lot of respect, but working well together with your team, lifting others up, and then making sure that those that are coming up behind you get the mentorship that they need. It's a simple recipe, but you've figured it out, and we are very thankful that you have. So usually we ask for another 15 years when we're celebrating the first 15. We won't commit you to that, but we certainly hope we get uh, some more time out of you. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you. How about a round of applause for Dave? Thank you. I think there's other coworkers of Dave's here. Is that true? Would you like to stand up? I see you back there, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have um, Kristen Randla and Emily Wren that would like to recognize Tony Burkhardt for her 15 years with Motor V. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Emily Wren, Deputy Motor Vehicle for the Clerk and Recorder's Office. And I am honored to have the opportunity to um, recognize Tony Burkhart and her 15 years of service to the citizens of Douglas County. Personally, I have only known Tony for a little over five years. Um, and in that time, I can tell you that she has gone to be the go-to person for all driver's license-related questions for the county. She uh, is a, by far the most senior subject matter expert we have on staff and a dependent resource continually every day. But something more important is how kind Tony is. Her top strength um, as Clifton Strengths Finder sees is empathy. And, um, and she's the exact person we want someone helping on the worst day when time and time again they've failed to obtain driver's license credentials through Colorado um, or just are simply struggling. And, uh, 
I have some numbers to back that up for you. So within um, the past four years, Tony has received over 750 responses to our clerk and recorder feedback matter survey. She herself is the reason of over 4% of those responses. And um, her average, very satisfied customer service rating of 99.3%. Um, any, any business would want this caliber of employee serving their customers, and we have been blessed to have her serving our citizens for 15 years. As I mentioned, I've only known Tony for a little less than, or a little over five years, so I reached out to some of my colleagues who have been here much longer, and here's a few things they had to say. Leslie Irvin, Tony is known by some of us with Tony with an I. She was great when she was on the motor vehicle side, and now she's super great because she helps motor vehicle and driver's license. Questions too. Tony has three gay kids, and she's a great mom. I can always count on Tony when I have a secure and verifiable ID question about out-of-state driver's license questions. She is a wonderful friend and coworker. Carmen Zambrana. I have known Tony for over seven years. Her knowledge and grace and desire to help team with customer questions regarding name changes through marriage is commendable, and she embodies what serving with integrity is all about. I consider Tony our all about driver's license oracle. We think, we think the world of her. Christy Krause. Tony always finds a way to get the job done, and done well. She loves serving the citizens. She always helps new employees get up to speed and is willing to lend a hand where needed. She played an instrumental role in developing the driver's license office and comes up with fantastic ideas that have benefited her team and the department. As a lead, she is always ready to offer the right assistance to colleagues who are having difficulty with their duties. She has formed good relationships with all members of the team and encourages positive relationships for a fun working environment. Elaine Gabriel. I was here when Tony started working in motor vehicle. Once you have met Tony, she instantly takes you in as a friend. She's worked her way up to lead and for a short time was my supervisor. Tony's a lot of fun to work with. In her youth, she was a model, and if you ask her, she'll show you her runway walk. <laughs> she is now the lead in driver's license. If I call her with questions, she always responds. She treats her friends like family, and I am grateful to be a part of that family. Tony, congratulations for your excellent service to Douglas County. Uh, Tony's current supervisor, Chris Lamont, would also like to share a few comments. Emily, thank you. Hey, Good Chris. afternoon, commissioners. We're used to seeing you two are right over here. I know, it's a little <laughs> different know, being yeah. on this side of the dais Snuck today. Up on us, yeah. Um, so to echo some of Emily's comments, I've known Tony since I started with Douglas County in 2019, but I had the honor of stepping in as her supervisor this past October. And in the short time that I've worked with Tony um, directly, she's been my right-hand gal in driver's license. She 100% leads with that top strength of empathy um, for her colleagues and citizens alike. She never hesitates to jump on the line and lend a hand or offer to take over transactions when one of her colleagues is having a particularly challenging day. She's people first, quickly followed by quality. One example I have is actually from a letter we received in November of 2020. This was sent to former um, clerk and recorder Merlin Klotz uh, by one of our citizens. I'm not gonna read the entirety of the letter. I wanna honor your time here today. Um, but the letter closes with this. Tony Burkhart is amazing, very impressive, and has a great sense of humor. She treated mom as if she were her own family. We felt like Tony was our own welcome to Douglas County, Colorado ambassador. She was very caring, protective, and informative in getting us through our crisis. Douglas County government should be proud to have such an exemplary associate. And I can say we are. Um, congratulations, Tony, and thank you for your 15 years of dedication to your colleagues and the citizens of this county. Now you get to come up. <laughs> Tony, welcome. Would you like to say a few words? Um, I will not ask you to runway walk if you do not want to. <laughs> <laughs> not the right floor. <laughs> I mean, we got room, but. Well, no, but thank you for all the support that I've always been given, and I appreciate people letting me do my job the way I do it, because I don't necessarily fit in the box everybody else fits in, but I know what I'm doing, I know how to do it, and I'm going to do my best to do it 100%, do it right the first time, so I don't have people coming back, and if somebody does have to come back, I don't want them to come back upset, so I 
If you don't have what you need, let me talk to you, let me help you. Make sure you have what you need when you come back. So that it's only two trips, and it, preferably it's only one trip. Sometimes it has to be two trips because something's missing with the real ID and the documents required. Things get missed, and you can only put so much on a website because people are gonna read so much. If, if you put everything you needed, they wouldn't read any of it. So I appreciate you letting me do what I do. And I, I work with great gals over there. They're all great. And I know if I am here today, I know they have it. And they know if they need me, I have my phone. So thank you. Well, Tony, thank you for those comments. And if you can stay with us for a moment, I know our board has some comments for you as well. Yes, sir. So, Tony, thank you for your 15 years of service. That means you started around 2008 yep. when things are really tough. So I imagine there were a lot of people coming in that weren't very happy. But it sounds like in listening to you and Emily and Chris that if we were to ask Wikipedia a question about how to do Colorado driver's licenses, it would have your picture because you know how to do it. And I just heard you say you don't want people to make two trips if they don't have to. And I'm sure our, I know our citizens appreciate that. So thank you for your empathetic heart, your willingness to help, and the fact that you have two superstars, Emily and Chris, here vouching for you and telling us about you speaks volumes. And I also see other people from the clerk's office who are probably here to support you as well, with, which also speaks volumes. So congratulations, Tony, and the rest of your team. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Teal? Yeah, speaking of which, I think we see uh, um, she's not the newest uh, clerk and recorder employee. Oh, wait, she is the clerk and recorder. I think she's hiding in the back there as well. <laughs> so, you know, uh, before, before uh, coming here in... A, full-time elected office, I was in the software industry. And time and again, you know, you, you look for those people that are able to accumulate knowledge. And accumulate knowledge and then share that knowledge with their coworkers. And it becomes that go-to person you always want to have on the team, particularly when, you know, it's a, it's a rush job or it's a, it, you're doing the impossible. You're literally breaking the laws of math in order to get it done. And uh, I, I hope we're not breaking laws, particularly laws of math, in the clerk and recorder's office, are we? Thank goodness. Um, but it, it speaks to that. When I hear Chris, when I hear Emily tell the stories of your coworkers, I hear the same, um, I hear the same story of those go-to people that I knew in business. So to know that we have folks like you working for all of us here in the county, uh, that gives me great confidence. That gives me great confidence because... I mean, um, I, I could make a joke right now and ask everybody to raise their right hand if they really enjoy going to, to Motor V to renew a license, uh, driver's license, renew tags. And the answer is we probably wouldn't get a whole lot of hands in the air. So knowing that we're able to take care of people um, when they're making time out of their day to come in and do something that they got to do. We, you know, it's required of them by their government. And you have that attitude of let's get them in. Let's get them taken care of. Let's get them out. I, I think that's very important. And uh, thank you again for uh, so another 15 year. -er. Mm -hmm. So another another 15 years. You want to do this for another 15? Uh, that's cool by me. It sounds like everybody <laughs> will be happy to have you around. So thanks every thanks for everything. Um, well done. And keep it up. We are counting on you. Thank you. Well, I've got a good story. I just heard from a longtime friend from Texas that actually was one of those people that would raise his hand and say, I had a really good experience with Motor V. Uh, and Texas is not known for having a lot of regulations, but they, he got here and he said he was in and out of Motor V in like 15 minutes and it was very affordable. Uh, we often say you, you are the public face of Douglas County. You're the vice president of first impressions. And so that really means a lot to us when we hear from citizens that they've had a great experience. Um, you are obviously very competent at what you do, but again, you don't get to 15 years without that additional secret sauce. And what I heard is kind, empathetic, and fun. So thank you for doing that. And I do want to recognize our elected official, uh, Clerk and Recorder, Sherry Davis, and her office from the clerk's office. Thank you for being here with us, everyone. Let's give Tony a big round of applause. Thank you.
you. And with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and call our meeting to order. It's great to have a lot of that uh, wonderful employee recognition in our invocation. If you'll all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Attorney Pratt, do we have certification of the agenda today? Good afternoon, Commissioners. Chris Pratt with the County Attorney's Office. All the items on today's agenda have been reviewed by our office and meet legal approval. Great. Thank you. And do any Commissioners have disclosures for items on this agenda today? I have none. No, sir. And I have none either. With that, we will move to citizen comment, which is item two today. At this time, you are welcome to comment about any topic other than what is scheduled on today's regular agenda. You will be prompted to comment on those items at the appropriate time. This is an opportunity to share your thoughts and ideas with us. If you do want to comment, if you can just state your name and where you reside prior to making those comments, you will have up to three minutes. Commissioner comments, if any, will follow all citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments today? Yes, sir. If you want to just come to the podium and let us know who you are and where you reside. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate this opportunity to pre present my, uh, some of my thoughts to you. Uh, my name is Gary Weaver. I live in Franktown, 11986 Bear Creek Drive. In Franktown, 80116. I've lived there for 20, let's see, 24 years. Lived in uh, Colorado for 47. Um, I'm a little concerned about. First of all, I wanted to thank the people that preceded me because the I just had my driver's license renewed and I was shocked. I was out of there in five minutes and it was great. It was far better than past. So that's doing a good job there. Um, I want to remind you, I'm 77 years old. I might draw a blank from time to time, so I, I know three minutes is not that long, but uh, uh, it, it might happen. If you just, just please bear with me if it does. Uh, I, what I'm here for is um, I would like to um, prioritize our situation with water. I know the state controls the water, but we can control the conservation of water. It, uh, it kind of turns my, well, I get twisted about it. When, I'm in, when I was on the planning commission for 14 or 20, uh, 13, 2012 to 2014, most of the projects that came up were re, uh, re uh, districting or uh, re, um, oh, that's the word I want, <laughs> rezoning some of these areas for big, bigger developments or even smaller developments. And, and that's fine, I'm not anti-development, but I think we've reached a point now where we need to start proposing other things for land and land use. I would like to see some, uh, maybe some wildlife refuges or uh, perhaps uh, more parks. I know we have nice parks, beautiful car parks, more parks for uh, horseback riding and that sort of thing, and, and just open space for animals. Um, my ex-wife uh, lives over in, uh, off of, uh, well, she lives in the uh, um, area off of, uh, um, oh, I can't think of the name of the road now, but she looked out her window the other day. It's the um, area that's just uh, south of downtown or Castle Rock. There were six uh, elk in that area, wooded area, trapped in an area about the size of this room that couldn't find their way out. And she called the wildlife people and, and they, uh, as far as I know, it's still going on. I just think, let's do a little bit more. For each proposal, there should be some kind of a conservation promise that you're not gonna, and that the water is gonna be used wisely and uh, and wildlife maybe should be managed a little better so they're, uh, they, they're considered, uh, uh, their migration trails should be considered, especially when there's heavy construction in this area. And there's a lot of noise, the animals are confused. I just hate to see this go on. 
Uh, I'll quit now. There's, I just want to add one more thing. My ex-wife said there used to be tons of hummingbirds in her area, which are they're not there anymore. This is the area. I wish I could. I'm, I'm stammering now, but it's an area. I think it's called the. Um, uh, it's on. It's on um, uh, 86 and. Uh, 86 Mr. Weaver, if you could wrap up your comments. In that area, southeast or northeast of there are lots of migration trails that run through there. Mr. Weaver, I would ask you to wrap up your comments if you could. What's that? Could you wrap up your comments? Yeah, I, I was just going to wrap them up. Uh, it, it needs to be an area where the uh, wildlife can, can leave if, if necessary. And uh, I see a lot of wildlife just uh, struggling to uh, find a different habitat. Okay. All in the area. That's Sir, thank you so much for, for being okay. with us today. We appreciate that. And thank you for your service on, on the Planning Commission oh, as well. Welcome. We appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Any additional citizen comment today? Do we have any citizen comment online, Troy? Thank you, Commissioner. I have no online comment. Okay. With that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any commissioner comments. Any commissioner comments? I'm done. No, I'll just say, um, sir, your, your words are, are well heard, and, and they match uh, what we've heard from many of our neighbors over the last couple of years. Um, we do have plans to have renewed emphasis on water management here in the county, and I assure you we've got uh, a great open space commission uh, that are, uh, you know, looking at, at taking the capital that people um, of Douglas County have approved to be, with, you know, withdrawn on sales tax for every single purchase and used for the preservation of open space. There's a great commission there. They bring uh, forward to the commissioners um, some really great ideas, uh, land opportunities to conserve and protect. And, you know, that's, that's work that uh, I know we have plans to continue doing. Um, I would hope we do. Um, if, if we don't, we should, we should fix that because I think we all have that dedication to keeping Douglas County, not just the place that we moved to. And I moved here um, really almost 25 years ago uh, when I got out of the Army. And it's, it's been the best place to live. Um, I, I definitely want it to be a place that we all still want to live in and call the best place on earth. Thank you for that, Commissioner Teal. Thank you, sir. So with that, we'll move on to item three, which is our consent agenda. And I'll just ask, is there any citizen comment either in the room or online with regard to our consent agenda? I have no online comment. Okay, thank you, Troy. And with that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or emotion. I have a motion to approve the request in all items A through AB of the consent agenda. Item Agenda item AC has been pulled. Second. So we have a first and second on the floor. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Aye, and that carries 3-0. With that, we'll move to item four on today's agenda, which is the American Rescue Plan Act subrecipient agreement and contract with All Health Network for a dedicated veteran clinician in the amount of $276,979. Laura Sinconi from the Mental Health Initiative is here to present. Hi, Laura. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Laura Sinconi for staff presenting agenda item A on the regular agenda this afternoon. So to give you some background um, on the agenda item today, back in 2020 when uh, we started looking at veteran mental health, there were Nearly 20,000 veterans living in Douglas County are about 5.5% of Douglas County's population. Um, and just over 42,000 living in Arapahoe County are 6.5% of their population. 
in the same year of 2020, veterans were identified as a priority population in Colorado as a part of the Office of Behavioral Health's needs assessment. Veterans were identified as a priority population in part due to higher rates of suicide, which per surpass both the national and general population rates. Additionally, the rate in Colorado is even higher among veterans between the ages of 18 and 34. Veterans who die by suicide also commonly have co-occurring physical health care needs and are less likely to have ever been treated uh, for a mental health condition when compared to the general population. Nationally, according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, we're also seeing increased rates of substance use disorder among veterans. In the 2020 Office of Behavioral Health Needs Assessment, there were recommendations for improving the mental and behavioral health outcomes of veterans in Colorado, including ed educating veterans about treatment, expanding access to high quality care, developing programs among community-based organizations, and developing suicide prevention programming. Um, and we have taken all of this into consideration um, when developing um, our plans for approaching veteran mental health in Douglas County. According to a 2019 SAMHSA survey was, which asked veterans to identify the locations where they receive treatment, community outpatient centers were ranked uh, within the top three. And while our community mental health center, All Health Network, does indeed serve veterans, they um, do not have very specific programming for mental health and substance use disorder among the veteran population. In September of last year, uh, this board allocated $8.9 million of the county's $68.2 million in American Rescue Plan Act funding to five mental and behavioral health priority areas. And this doesn't include uh, the allocation to Rocky Mountain Crisis Partners for the implementation of the new 988 crisis line. Um, but one of those five mental and behavioral health priority areas um, is specific to veteran mental health. And this includes a three-pronged approach to approving veteran access to mental health and substance use disorder treatment and to improve competency in supporting veterans with mental and behavioral health conditions. So you can see under the um, purple column for veteran mental health in the green box, we are focusing specifically today on a contract and subrecipient agreement regarding a specialized veteran mental health clinician. But in addition to this clinical position, the veteran mental health priority area includes a new part-time veteran service officer to specialize in mental health resources in Douglas County and processing mental health claims as well as to act as a liaison between the Douglas County Veteran Service Office and the Veteran Mental Health Clinician at All Health Network. We will also offer the Veteran Mental Health First Aid module to the VSOs in Douglas and Arapahoe counties. Mental Health First Aid is an evidence-based, trusted, and national skills-based training that teaches participants about mental health and substance use issues and how to respond to them. Um, and I know if Chris Mays were here today, he's the director of the Veteran Service Office in, in Douglas County, he would say that um, this would be a great training to have in the VSO's back pocket. They're seeing more and more veterans coming into the office with mental health needs. Um, so having the skills um, to support veterans in crisis or who just need a little bit of extra help would be very valuable. By adding a dedicated veteran clinician position to All Health Network's continuum of care, we will be addressing a barrier in access, especially for veterans who rely on non-veteran affair providers and for veterans who don't have insurance coverage or whose insurance coverage would not cover the total cost of care. This clinical position will be a licensed mental health professional and either have shared living experience, meaning a veteran peer themselves, 
or culturally competent or with significant working experience uh, with veteran populations. We have uh, identified a caseload cap of 50 veterans at any given time. The county VSOs in Douglas and Arapahoe County will be working together uh, to refer veterans identified through those offices to this veteran clinician at All Health Network. And um, just to highlight a couple of value adds for this position, um, it's of significant importance that this is a new local option for veterans, um, specifically veterans who uh, can't afford treatment. The options for veterans in that position uh, include traveling to Denver or um, Colorado Springs to receive pro bono treatment, um, but that's not accessible for, for everyone. So this particular position can be nimble and rotate through the different offices in Douglas and Arapahoe counties, um, and it just provides a more accessible community options for veterans. In addition, All Health Network has a sliding scale and also can provide scholarships for veterans who aren't able to afford the full cost of treatment. Um, so this is very significant, that even if a veteran can't pay for any amount of treatment, they'll be prioritized uh, and can be served by this clinician. All Health has already developed a service flyer and a referral pathway to make it quick and easy to refer veterans identified by the veteran service offices in Douglas and Arapahoe counties. There are two documents uh, for the board's consideration today. The first is a contract which covers the scope of work for the program and identifies Arapahoe County as a participant and referring partner. The sub-recipient agreement is a companion to the contract and covers how the American Rescue Plan Act funds will be distributed and any ARPA specific requirements for sub-recipients like additional reporting. This will be executed strictly between Douglas County and All Health Network. The recommendation for the board's consideration is the approval of the contract and American Rescue Plan Act subrecipient agreement for a dedicated veteran clinician. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Laura, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Any questions for staff? I do have a question about <clears throat> partnering with Rabho County. Um, I understand that All Health serves both counties, but the very first slide you showed a significantly higher number of veterans from Arapaho County than Douglas County. So is there any guarantee that Douglas County veterans will be receiving the services first since we're putting the funds into this, or is it just first come, first serve? That's an excellent question. Um, we have written into the contract um, a, a work process to identify the split between the two counties, but because Douglas County is funding the position and Douglas and Arapahoe County is not contributing funds at this time, um, we would prioritize Douglas County veterans. Was Arapahoe County approached to see if they would like to partner with us? They were, um, but they were only interested in being a referring partner at this time. Okay, so there is a plan then so that Douglas County veterans get the care they need? Yes. Okay, thank you. Further questions? No questions. You know, I, I don't have any questions, but just some comments. Um, obviously, Laura, your su success and leadership in the realm of mental health is just known far and wide. And what you've done through the Mental Health Initiative is really powerful and very significant. Um, not a surprise at all that this Mental Health Initiative has become not only a, a regional leader, but really a statewide beacon for those that are seeking mental health care. So thank you for all the work that you've done uh, in a variety of arenas. Um, veterans in particular uh, are a citizen group that we need to be very thoughtful around. They've given all and we want to make sure that um, their needs are addressed appropriately. So certainly appreciate your leadership and, and Commissioner Teal's leadership as our veteran commissioner uh, ensuring that those that need care get it. So thank you for that. Uh, let me open it up for any citizen comment. Is there any citizen comment in the room or online with regard to this item? I have no online comment. 
Thank you, Troy. And with that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or emotion. I would just like to make a couple of comments. Um, you know, this county is a leader, I believe, in mental health services for our residents. And I just want to tell you how important this is and, and for the people online and the people here. Um, quite by accident, I got a job uh, as an independent contractor with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment in 2004, building the National Suicide Prevention um, Group. And that was a contract that the state had gotten through the CDC. It's a national violent prevention. And I was shocked at the number of veterans in the database. I had to read about 1,000 cases of suicide every year. And I truly was shocked to see the number of veterans that were represented in that database. And that led me to run for county coroner. And as the, in the four years as being the county coroner, again, I saw firsthand the devastation that happens to some of our veterans. And that's why I'm so supportive of this. And I want to make sure that Douglas County veterans get to the front of the line. So thank you for all the work that you have done on this, Laura. And you, Barbara, and if Maggie's played a part in this as well. So thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I would add a, a comment. I didn't include this data in the presentation today, but um, that reporting system, if you look it up online, you can filter it by veteran status. Um, between 2004 and 2019, in Douglas County, 16% um, of the suicides in this county um, over that time period were just among veterans. Um, but the, the rate was also very similar in Arapahoe County. So despite Arapahoe County having double um, the veteran population, and yet we have a similar rate, it does show that there's a need in Douglas County to support veteran mental health. Thank you, Laura. Further discussion? Yeah, um, you know, um, the modern battlefield is not the ideal place for the American mind. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you, re, you watch the news and it seems, uh, boy, American armed forces are really good at what they do, but it does come at, as a, it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost that I think are often reflected in the numbers that Laura just shared with us. Um, you know, we do seem to attract uh, veterans here to Douglas County. I guess I'm guilty of that statement myself as, um, you know, uh, this is where my family moved to uh, following my time in service. Um, my, my father was a Vietnam veteran. Um, my Uncle Jimmy was uh, a Vietnam combat veteran. And even my Uncle Gary was a Vietnam veteran um, in the Air Force. And they were always very critical of uh, watching movies about the Vietnam War because, you know, every every American soldier in a Vietnam War movie was crazy. And they, you know, my dad would scoff and say, you know, well, that's, that's like me. That's like your Uncle Jimmy. That's like your Uncle Gary. You know, are we crazy? And um, it was an impression that it was made on me for a very long time. And it's something that, it's a bias that I still hang on to. Yet, um, Veterans are tough people to talk to sometimes. We get put through a training regime, we deal with a career, no matter how brief, um, that is very black and white, cut and dried. And so um, I, I think it is appropriate that this is something that is funded because uh, the, the veteran mind is, is a little different. We, we have made that decision as a society that the veteran mind will be different. So that when we as Americans go on the modern battlefield, we win. We, uh, we do, um, well, we do terrible things on the modern battlefield to our fellow human being. And it does leave an impression. I've always hated the term mental health and mental disease for veterans because for veterans it's not a disease, but it is an injury incurred during our time of service. So I do think it's appropriate that we have made this decision to uh, fund this position. Uh, again, veterans are moving here. Um, the senior guy uh, in the uh, planning office for the Colorado Army National Guard lives in Parker. Uh, Dave Callahan, the director of Veterans Affairs for Colorado, the whole state, lives in Parker. And we will be, um, as a matter of fact, I believe he's back 
from a year serving at Forces Command um, for the United States Army, um, and will be retiring in May, very good friend of mine, um, he lives in Parker. So for some reason, we keep drawing veterans. Uh, this is where we all choose to live. I think it's great that we're making room um, uh, in our budget to, to fund this program. And uh, you know we'll, we'll hit up Arapahoe County later once we have success. Success, right, Laura? Outstanding. Well, if it pleases the board, and without further ado, I do have a motion to approve uh, an American Rescue Plan Act, sub -sub Act subrecipient agreement and contract with all health networks for a dedicated veteran clinician in the amount of $276,979. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. Any further discussion? <clears throat> You know, I, I did have, I think an important point was raised about ensuring that the veteran population in our county uh, receives the priority service. Um, as much as we appreciate Arapahoe County, we don't uh, want to subsidize uh, their responsibility if they're not contributing financially. So can you help walk me through that just to be clear? I, I mean, our veteran population here is large, to Commissioner Teal's point. Yeah, when we... Um we're thinking of which agency to reach out to to, to be the provider for um, this position. Um, and we're seriously looking at All Health Network because of their position uh, as a community mental health center that provides the full continuum or a very large continuum of care in mental and behavioral health. Um, as Commissioner Thomas stated, they serve both counties. And so we thought to begin, we would work with Arapahoe County um, in a regional approach to veteran mental health, creating a stronger network of care beyond Douglas County's borders. Um, and I hear the board and that we should be prioritizing Douglas County residents given the funding that's being contributed by the board. Um, and I, I take that um, seriously. Um, and I believe that we would be prioritizing Douglas County veterans. But that was really our thought process, creating a more regional approach to veteran mental health um, and working with an organization that serves both counties, uh, giving a little bit of leverage there, um, but not to significantly um, give Arapahoe County more um, of the caseload for this veteran clinician. Okay, well, that's very helpful. Thank you. Any further discussion? See. I'd just like to follow up that you said not to give Arapahoe County more. So I would hate to see us lose a veteran in Douglas County because an Arapahoe County veteran is getting services and the Douglas County veteran is not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that, and I don't want to refer to this as a pilot program necessarily, but I think that there will be some time for us to learn what that split looks like. Um, but we would be very aware um, if we were skewing one way or another. But again, I would like to see more of the caseload go to Douglas County veterans. Um, and we've been working very closely with Chris Mays and his staff in uh, the Veteran Service Office in designing this position and building it around the priorities that they've identified out of their office. So I do think that um, Arapahoe County uh, has been offered some space in this contract, but we would be certainly keeping an eye on the referral load that we're getting and mindful of how many Douglas County veterans are being served and how many Arapahoe County veterans are being served. And if we got to a point where it was becoming, a, there was a critical kind of mass that we were reaching with Arapahoe County, um, I would approach them for contribution of funding or funding an, an additional position specifically for Arapahoe County. So along those lines, I might offer a, a friendly amendment to the motion that would require that 100% of the demand for veterans mental health services in Douglas County be satisfied before uh, offering an, any additional services to our neighbor to the north. Um, again, these are taxpayer dollars. We want to ensure that the Douglas County veterans are being served first. So I would offer that up as, as a, a friendly amendment to the mover. Absolutely accepted. So I will accept that. 
that addition, is that something, Laura, that can happen with this contract that's been negotiated? Um, I believe so. Um, I would want to talk to colleagues in Arapahoe County and see if there was issue because they have um, inserted themselves into that contract, and so it might require um, some tweaking. So I don't want to make a commitment to that. I want to make sure that I understand all the dimensions before um, a response. So if we don't know that if this is something that would be acceptable and we can accomplish, is, is this the time to continue this matter? Commissioners, if I could, Barbara Drake for staff. The other reason that we um, approached Arapahoe County, not only because All Health serves both counties, um, but we also wanted, we got information from both the veteran service officers about their prediction about how many people they thought would they would be referring. And we wanted to hire a full-time veterans treatment person. We did not want it to be part-time. Some of the people that Chris Mays and his staff work with will access services. They'll have benefits for mental health through through other avenues, including at the VA clinics. And, and we really wanted to design this to make sure that uh, veterans that did not have resources could easily get treatment without jumping through any hoops. So we base this sum on a full-time caseload and expected referrals that Chris Mays shared with us, and then and he reached out to Arapahoe County to find out. So we didn't want it to be part-time. We wanted it to be a full-time caseload of this individual that would also travel to Douglas County to provide some of these services as part of this agreement. So that was part of the reason why we we designed it as a regional approach okay thanks so we have a motion that has been amended uh, and that amendment has been accepted any further discussion um, I, I just want to be clear that what I understand your amendment is is that Douglas County veterans will always be served first and any additional space will be Arapahoe County veterans and I'm not sure from what we're hearing from staff that that can be just done because we make a motion here. Well, I'll clarify that from a board perspective. Um, staff can certainly engage in negotiations, but the final arbiter and determiner uh, of what we agree to as a county rests with this board of county commissioners. Let me just confirm that with our county council, Chris. What I would say is this appears to be a contract between the provider and Douglas County. Okay. And in the contract, I will quote for you a provision in here. The clinician will serve veterans residing in both Douglas and Arapahoe counties by responding to referrals sent by the veteran service offices of Douglas and Arapahoe counties. The division of service between the two counties is not defined but may be clarified and or adjusted as the data is collected and need is more clearly understood. Barbara Drake is the um, is the authorized representative under the contract and so she will be the one looking over those numbers and ensuring so I think the board's direction here could be uh, put in place in the contract language as is since she will be the one that the contract is with our county although Arapaho is um, participating it we are the ultimate provider of the funds and the decider of what is the appropriate division of, of labor for the, the contractor if that makes sense. I think, I think this contract has sufficient language in it to allow uh, Barbara to follow the board's direction as the authorized representative for this vendor. With, as, well, as yeah, um, and I appreciate that. I, I would prefer it be memorialized in writing, especially if there are future boards that uh, long exceed uh, our tenure here, um, for that to be certainly something that they could refer back to. Commissioners, if I, if I may, again, Barbara Drake, I think what I would like to agree to with All Health is that they will not turn down any Douglas County veterans that need this service. So not say you have to take our veterans first and not take any Arapahoe, because I think they'll come in kind of at, at the same time, so to speak, or overlapping. But I think we can get a commitment that they will not turn down any Douglas County veteran that needs to be served um, either by this individual or by somebody else in their organization if this individual has a full caseload. I think that's a very reasonable expectation. Nobody gets turned down. 
Well, and I, I we certainly appreciate that, Barbara, and you've done a wonderful job of negotiating and working with Arapahoe County. They've been a phenomenal regional partner. Um, I think the hypothetical makes sense. Maybe the question is on the ground, what if there's more demand than we have resources to serve? And as we've seen in a variety of instances, whether it's our workforce board or Tri-County Health or JD18, uh, Arapahoe County tends to consume a lot of resources. Mr. Mr. Chair, at this time, yeah. I think be be wise for staff. We'll, we'll uh, take this under advisement and bring it back so we don't... Um, Let's see what we can do with some of the language after a few conversations and bring it back. So since it's a business meeting, we could do that even at the next meeting. <clears throat> what would the board like to do? Well, as a point of order, I just, I just mentioned that there is a motion that has received a second. So I would like a vote. Personally, I think we can proceed. Staff has direction. I think they've defined the nature of the agreement. We can proceed with the yes vote and bring this back for further work in order to tweak guidance uh, with staff as well as guidance to all health. But we don't have an agreement with all health until we approve this contract. So I would agree with that and I'll accept that as calling the question. Uh, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And that? I will vote for it, although I would have preferred a continuance. I will vote to get this done. <laughs> okay, so that passes 3-0. Barbara, thank you, and let us know if we need further thank you. work on this. Appreciate it. So with that, we'll move to our second item, 4B on the regular agenda, which are purchase requests for Stone Canyon Radio Tower Motorola providing radio frequency equipment in the amount of $700,465, and for Castle Rock Microwave providing civil equipment and civil services in the amount of $1,030,843.93 for a total amount of $1,731,308.93. Uh, Captain Troy McCarty presenting for staff. Hi, Troy. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, again, Troy McCarty, Captain with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> um, as you're aware from previous work sessions regarding this project, the public safety communication um, has been inadequate uh, in the Stone Canyon Outdoor Education Center and as well as in a six-mile stretch of Highway 105. With the recent installation of fiber optics and with permanent easement provided by the Douglas County School District, we feel it's feasible now to construct a radio tower that can address these public safety issues. Um, what I'd like to do, if it pleases the board, um, is introduce our radio systems administrator that has uh, technical knowledge of this project and has been attached to it uh, from the beginning. So without further ado, Jeff Vaughn. Thank you. Um, commissioners, as you're well aware, this is uh, in conjunction with uh, efforts we were making uh, as a county with Douglas County School District to improve safety and security for all school facilities. Uh, this originally started out as uh, just trying to address uh, coverage immediately for uh, Stone Canyon Outdoor Education Center. Uh, it happens to be situated in a bowl, if you will, that tucks it back in up against uh, BLM and Forest Service land. Uh, so there's unfortunately no way to get real communications in there short of uh, building this radio site pretty much in the exact location that we've designated. So it will look into uh, this bowl to provide that coverage. Uh, and as Captain alluded to, it also addresses six miles of Highway 105 that we've always had uh, questionable coverage, if you want to say it that way. Uh, it does also help some of our open space areas uh, as well. And this project uh, was, we actually vetted four other possibilities before arriving at this particular solution. Uh, none of them were actually cost effective. Uh, and would not provide efficient communications uh, responding to an emergency in this location. Uh, by adding this tower, uh, it allows all public safety agencies in Douglas County, as well as all of our governmental entities, uh, to be able to communicate if we have issues in this area that we're all responding to and work together seamlessly. Thank you for that. Any questions for staff in the Sheriff's Office? 
So my only question is that Motorola is paying for this, and is the 911 board paying for part of this, and the rest is out of Justice Center? Uh, this particular project, ma'am, is 100% out of Justice Center funds. Um, so the 911 board is not involved in this one at this time. Uh, they will pay for the fiber connection that we have to have for this location. Uh, so that will be an ongoing cost that 911 board will fund. Uh, the rest of it is out of the Justice Center savings, uh, sales tax savings. Uh, and that was um, basically because the project funding the school board had uh, was not enough to, to fund this entire project. So when we got to the fact that it addresses all of our issues uh, for everybody in the county, not just the school, that's when we uh, looked back to the Justice Center sales tax fund uh, to help pay for this particular uh, radio site. And originally, that is how we paid for all of our communications radio sites. So the Justice Center sales tax is picking up a little over a million. Is Motorola providing $700,000 worth of equipment? Is that what this says? Yes, ma'am. So this particular site, normally we wind up having Motorola does all the work. Uh, Castle Rock Microwave is a local um, radio shop. Uh, they were highly involved in helping vet out all the possible solutions for this area. Uh, they are highly experienced in building radio towers, just they have never done one for us uh, or developing site locations. Uh, so we felt the fact that we could keep some of that money within our local economy, uh, it would be ideal to have Castle Rock Microwave, who was already involved in the project, uh, pursue the civil piece that they could provide, and then Motorola is simply providing uh, the actual RF equipment that goes into the radio site. Um, and then also we were able to save roughly $70,000 by having Castle Rock Microwave do the civil piece instead of Motorola. Okay, thank you for that explanation, Jeff. Further questions or comments? No, sounds like a great project. Two birds, one stone. Absolutely, and I concur. So with that, I'll open it up for any citizen comment. Is there any citizen comment in the room or online with regard to this item 4B? have no online comments. Thank you, Troy. And with that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or a motion. I have a motion to approve the purchase requests for Stone Canyon Radio Tower, Motorola providing radio frequency equipment in the amount of $700,465, and for Castle Rock Microwave providing civil equipment and civil services in the amount of $1,030,000. <laughs> $843.93 for a total amount of $1,731,308.93. Good investment. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 And that carries 3-0. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Our last item today is item 4C. It's an intergovernmental agreement between the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas and the State of Colorado Department of Transportation regarding financial contribution toward construction of the US 85 and Daniels Park Road temporary signal project, Douglas County project number CI 2021-045. Benjamin Pierce, Capital Improvements Project Supervisor. Not here, Art Griffiths is here. <laughs> yes, Presenting thank you, for staff. Griffith. Hi, Art. Uh, ben is on vacation this week enjoying Florida weather. Um, <clears throat> so very quickly, I'm pleased to bring before you an IGA with CDOT to install a traffic signal at US 85 and Daniels Park Road. You know, we've been working on that for several years. Um, previously, the county spent around or over $300,000 uh, relocating utilities and um, being involved in the design process. Initially, the county uh, was going to have to pay 100% of the cost. Um, CDOT would like to install a more permanent um, traffic signal. Uh, we had proposed a temporary span wire configuration. They're going to use mast arms. The project's estimated to cost uh, 1.3 million. And before you today is an intergovernmental agreement for the county's contribution for construction for $500,000. Project's supposed to be constructed in summer 2023. And after the project's completed, CDOT's responsible for all construction, ownership, and maintenance responsibilities. Any questions? 
Any questions for Art? I have none. It'll be really good to get this done. Yeah, same thing. Uh, absolutely, Art. Thank you so much for your incredible work uh, in transportation in Douglas County. It is a big part of what we fund, uh, and I believe we fund transportation in Douglas County more than any other county in the state. Is that right? It sure could be. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing. Um, so with that, uh, I will open it up for any citizen comment on this item 4C. Is there any citizen comment in the room or online? Commissioner, I have no online comment. Troy, thank you for that. And I'll close citizen comment, bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or emotion. Well, my in-laws lived in Castle Pine, so uh, there are plenty of times that I would uh, uh, try to take the back way as we used to call Daniels Park Road, down from their home uh, to my residence in Castle Rock. And I'll tell you what, that left turn to go south on 85 has gotten harder and harder and harder every single year. So it's a real pleasure for me to make a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement between the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas and the State of Colorado Department of Transportation regarding financial contribution towards construction of the US 85 and Daniels Park Road Temporary Signal Project, Douglas County Project CI2021-045. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye and that carries 3-0. Art, thank you for that. So with that, is there any other business before the board? Any other business today? Okay. And item six, our county manager. Any questions or comments from our county manager? Okay, thank you for your report. Um, and then finally, commissioner comments. Are there any commissioner comments today? You know, I always like to look through the manager's report and, and pick out something interesting. Um, today, we're going to talk about parks and trails who also look at all the trees on our properties. So if you are noticing that there are six trees that have been removed from the Wilcox pro uh, property right over here, including a large cottonwood tree that's just south of the Veterans Memorial. Um, that tree was totally hollow on the inside by the time our team took it down. So our staff are out there doing things like looking at trees at our property. So just know that our Parks and Trails Department, which we honored here today, are taking care of us in many ways. They also are the ones that do all of the snow removal on all the county buildings. So they do a good job for all of us in many ways. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Teal, anything? Yeah, the only comment I'd uh, want to leave our meeting with is um, a compliment to Pastor Saylor. Um, boy, now that was an invocation for a meeting of neighbors uh, and, a, and a community of neighbors. I, uh, I'll tell you what, unless uh, the board strenuously objects, in which case I will strenuously argue back, uh, we need to have the good pastor back. That was uh, a great way to open our meeting, and that concludes my comments. Well, thank you, Commissioner Teal, and it's because you instituted invocations that we now have them in the county, so thank you for that. I'll just say that the commissioners were honored and pleased to be with the National Association of Counties last week in Washington, D.C., with commissioners throughout the country. Had an opportunity to hear from President Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Director of Transportation, uh, and engage directly with our senator delegation from Colorado. Uh, ongoing conversation around issues related to airplane noise with the FAA, uh, issues related to the wildlife uh, and the wildfire mitigation services that we're providing in the county with the Forest Service. Uh, and of course, uh, working with the FBI and CBI on background checks related to human trafficking. We had an opportunity to ask questions directly of our senators. And one question I asked Senator uh, Hickenlooper was whether or not he was aware that the FBI was creating some roadblocks for us to do background checks and, and move forward with this legislation. Um, that came as a bit of a surprise to him, um, but he did indicate that he's willing to work well at the federal level to ensure that we are protecting those most vulnerable in our in our community. Um, so with that, I don't think we have anything else. Uh, the next business meeting will be held on Tuesday, March 14th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.